Hey guys, girls, how's it going? My name is Miguel. Welcome to another episode of the SoCal Watch Reviews Podcast, episode 90. Year and a half doing this, we've had some amazing collaborations. Uh, Last week, uh, I know you guys heard Mr. Uh, Mike Franz from Christopher Ward. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. And today we we got another great episode lined up for you guys. But first, P. Ross, how's it going, man? What's going on, bro? Hey, you know, Friday night, uh, we're doing fantastic, and I'm so excited for this next guest. Oh, yeah, um, no doubt. yeah, first and foremost, thank you, Vivian. She set this whole thing up. She's been my contact with this company, but do the intro, and then we'll jump into the wrist check. Okay, first of all, we have a gentleman mm-hmm. over in Hong Kong. You know what I mean? He is the founder of Undone Watches. And episode 90, let him on in. Michael Young in the building. Hi. Michael. Hi there. How's it going? Yeah, I'm Michael Young. So I'm the CEO of Undone. So we started the company in 2015. And uh, I've always been a watch collector since I was like a kid. Nice. Nice. That's very cool. Well, before we go into the story, like deeper into the story and some of the questions that we have, I'm interested and curious to know what you're wearing. I kind of, I kind of saw a little peek right there, but what are you, what are you wearing, Michael? Yeah, I'm always wearing the Knicks uh, release. So this is kind of like, uh, (laughs) that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a bronze case uh, divers watch. Yeah. Oh, very nice. nice. Very nice. nice. Cool. P Ross, what are you rocking, man? Um, Omega Geneve in the building oh, very on. nice yes, very nice yeah. well i have on my my terra right there if you can see it uh the undone watch is it's a beautiful watch i did a uh, video on it and i was super impressed by the quality of your watches michael i've heard so much uh but one of the things that really captivated my my uh my interest or piqued my interest was the fact that you could customize them and i customized his watch to have my son's initials and i made a a little logo for him so it's extra special in the collection and you know i i review a lot of watches right they come they go but this is definitely a keeper my son is excited he's only six years old but he's definitely excited to get this piece when he gets a little bit older i told him hey this is yours it has your initials he thinks it's really cool so thank you so much for creating such a cool product (laughs) (laughs) yes sounds good so all right so paint a picture for us you've been into watch collecting since you were a little kid uh when did you really get into collecting though that next level where you were like deep into watches was it in later on in life i'm assuming or were you a teen um actually i was exposed to the first mechanical watch since i was like 12 13 years old when my cousin was wearing an old uh, Rolex bubble back. And he oh, was showing me the inner, yeah, the, all the inner workings of, of the watch movement. So I was immediately hooked because I, I like things mechanical and moving. So I, I, I play with, you know, like radio control cars. I play with, you know, all those mechanical uh, toys. And okay. this is like a very, very interesting piece because things are so these are just like micro mechanics you know how can you make things so small i agree yes yeah, so so accurate so that that really got me hooked into you know looking into watch of course as a kid didn't have money so i was just you know trying to ask my dad what what old watches you had you know he had an old omega and stuff then i started wow. to wear them he had an old Seiko watch so i started wearing these old watches and then when I got into college, it's when I started uh, to, to really seriously look into watches. I was studying in Australia and okay. um, naturally they have those, uh, you know, uh, newspapers that sells uh, secondhand stuff. And I was looking, oh, okay. up, can I find some good old junk vintage watches there? So every weekend I will be looking through the papers uh, going to you know uh, all, all these uh, uh, flea markets to look for watches, and, okay. and that really got me into into the uh, into the hobby of collecting. Wow! Do you remember what was your your first piece that you bought with your money? And you're like, oh, this is this is a little expensive, but 
This is, this is yeah, going to hurt, I, but it's going to be good. The first one, I kind of bought in a super cheap Rolex, so-called Rolex, and then <laughs> found out it's just a, you know, just made out of junk parts. You know, oh, it had a no. case, mm -hmm. a fake movement, just a Rolex style. Oh. So that was my kind of my first. <laughs> oh, Everyone wow. had to, you know, kind of pay for the <laughs> hobby a little bit. <laughs> so this it's... was my first one. But, you know, that's a good learning experience. You know, never really buy cheap. There's nothing called cheap. So yeah. you, you get what you pay for, actually. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that, that got me into collecting. I started dismantling watches, trying to understand how it works. You know, I study as an engineer in, in college, but so this is kind of like my interest breaking down things <laughs> awesome but hey you know kudos to your dad for having an omega in the collection i mean that, that's awesome and i know that watches back in the day weren't what watches are now right i mean now omega rolex is unattainable i mean you got to have a lot of money yeah. to get into those kind of pieces but you know in right. talks with my dad he he's told me he's like yeah back in the you know 60s and 70s like i own a few omegas and they weren't like to him they they were expensive but they weren't really expensive they were just like anybody could get them you save a little bit of money and you could get them but now it's like it's not a little bit of money it's thousands of dollars you know and i was trying to explain to him that and he just it, he couldn't believe it he's like wait so how much are these things going for like that's crazy even in and back then money like it wasn't that crazy expensive i'm like i know it's mm -hmm. it's become like super expensive expensive to to get into the hobby and have something really good right and god forbid you want to get into the holy trinity then you got to mortgage your house and make a lot of money because that's that's yeah. that's just crazy so, yeah so, that's when i picked up you know good stuff the, all the goodies really came from that period you know i was you know checking out dealers and stuff you know i wanted to buy a diver's watch i want to buy a rolex okay. mariner so yeah. i went out to buy the so-called cheapest one on the okay. market and I, I remember uh, I paid for like four or five hundred Australian dollars. Oh, so okay. it's just like three, four hundred US dollars Man. Uh, to buy the cheapest okay. of Marina. And I bought it. Okay. And, and then I researched it. It, it looked different. It, it's different <laughs> to all the other ones that, that is on the market because, you know, Internet wasn't popular at that time. So I, I had a cheap and i was just wearing it daily and then when when people get serious about collecting they had you know different websites uh different books about rolexes then i found out the model i had was a super super rare model of a scenario wow. it was only made for one year so i bought it for like three four hundred us now it's costing around i mean selling on on auction sites for around 100 to 150 thousand dollars wow do you still own that watch i still own that i i wouldn't sell it not not for the money i mean if okay. i sell that watch then i'll just quit collecting altogether okay. wow so yeah, that's a very say, yeah is it safe yeah. to say that you still have a lot of the early pieces that you bought yeah yeah, yeah. i i kept most of them yeah okay yeah i used to have a lot of you know junk watches then i got rid of those and then just kept the nice ones okay yeah. so by yeah. junk you mean the franken watches or yeah, lower tier really watches non-branded mechanical things got it you know, okay I, I just kept the high quality swiss made watches that's maybe. awesome okay yeah. cool yeah that's very cool so, all right so that's, that's my background <laughs> that is very cool right on yeah it's yeah. a great background <laughs> so most of us have heard the story of how the company was founded can you elaborate more on the origin story and how it feels to be a pioneer in your industry right so you know basically i've also been um been in the business around the watch business i i had a factory that produces uh packaging boxes and parts for for watch companies so oh. I, I've been in kind of in the business, but not exactly in the watch business. Okay. Uh, so I've been I've been selling things to to different watch brands, and 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 I see these new brands come and go. I never really felt like I, I would start a watch company because ninety percent of the watch brands will would be gone, you know, in two three years time. Okay. So that's not exactly what I wanted, but I've been supplying people because I also do um, servicing on watches. Uh, I have a company that actually restores uh, vintage watches. And I yeah. was uh, restoring a lot of uh, old Rolex 
and, and uh, you know they have sloppy bracelets right and i do a lot of the rebuilds on the sloppy bracelets i That's even right. got a name called bracelet magician you know they right. make it up and so I, I actually make uh, old bracelets like brand new again. So That's like awesome. people like referring, you know, car engines. So I got into business related with vintage watches. And then suddenly a lot of um, companies, a few companies in the UK actually approached me and asked me to do modifications on, on some Rolexes, oh. you know. Uh, I wouldn't name them, but you probably you, you will find out who they are. But they they basically are taking a standard Rolex, um, coating it in black, and, and then changing hands and customizing dials and stuff. So yeah. they've been asking me to supply them uh, with all these parts and services to do the customization. So yeah. that's that's when I really started uh, into customizing watches. And then I actually, I, I, I was uh, at a pub with my now partner at Undone. I, and I was showing him, oh, I, I did this watch. You know, I supplied this company and for, for customized Rolex. So, and they sold for like three times the normal money <laughs> of a list price of, of, a, yeah. uh, no, of a Rolex. And I said, whoa, that's, that's super cool, right? You know, right. And, and my partner said, oh, yeah, but how much did you get out of it? You know. Guys were selling like three times over the list price of a, of a Rolex with that customized Rolex. I said, I made a, probably a couple hundred dollars out of it. Yeah, you <laughs> see that? You know, they were like making 50000 out of the watch. <laughs> and wow. I'm like getting a couple hundred dollars out of it. So, but, 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 but the conversation didn't end there. You know, so he, he told me, hey, Michael, since you, you know all the suppliers, you've been working in the watch industry. Why don't we, you know, offer something that is affordable uh, in the market with all these customization? Wouldn't that be great? And my partner is actually an expert uh, in internet uh, advertising. So he actually listed uh, his company on NASDAQ a couple of years ago. So he's kind of the, really the, the internet expert. So he, he said, don't worry, Michael, let's, let, let's combine forces. You are the watch guru. And I'm the internet guru. Let's do something and offer a true customization on watches, just like when watches in the good old days of pocket watches. You know, in the good old days of pocket watches, people go to a watchsmith, watchmaker, to actually order the watch. They would, you know, choose the case, choose the movement, and make up their watches. And right. we can actually do that now because of internet technologies. Now we often website to be the interface uh, with customers. You know, if you do it yeah. over the shop, then people will stay there for the whole day to complete one deal. Right. And that's not very efficient. So we kind of like move that experience onto the website. So people will be playing around on our customizer on our website, you know, choosing different fonts, uploading different photos, choosing the handouts and everything but they will not be using our time. They will be using only our server's time. Right. So I could literally have thousands of people playing over our customizer without us really working uh, manually at all. So we will only receive the order once you've completed your customization. And then that's where, our, where we start our work. So Miguel, you, you've actually been onto our website to customize things, right? Correct. So, People complain fun. to me, oh, Michael, I've been spending too much time on customizing. I couldn't make up my mind. I, I don't know which <laughs> style is best. But it's good fun, right? So you, you play with the customizer. So that's the beauty of our business. We, we can have um, a lot of people uh, into our store, so to say, uh, and, and without actually using a lot of uh, our, our, our own labor time, uh, our, own, our own work time. So I think that's a new business model that the bricks and mortar business where the watch business is, you know, more traditionally based. So they, it's not very efficient over a, a traditional uh, a store setup, but with internet setup, uh, this is the perfect place uh, to get customization done. So I, this is how we set out our business um, to have customization to offer a very good timepiece 
at a very affordable price. You know, since I've yeah. been supplying the watch business uh, with parts and, and, and packaging, I kind of like go to uh, the Basel show every year in, in Switzerland. And then, you know, actually supplying the watch uh, industry is very funny. Yeah, you see the Swiss people in the front end um, uh, doing all the nice shows and 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 and, and uh, displays and stuff, but in the back, it's actually um, China and Hong Kong is a very very strong uh, supplier to the watch industries for all yeah. the um, parts, for all the dials, for everything. So I've been meeting up during the Basel show with all these Hong Kongese uh, sitting <laughs> Oh, and this guy will be oh, a supply to this big company. And, and this guy will be the, 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 the band supply, the strap supply for another big brand. So we, we all sit around, like, we're just friends. So That's when nice. I started the company, you know, I was just like, oh, calling my lunch buddies. Oh, I need this case done. I need this band done. So I literally have access to all the top uh, quality supplies in the world. They really nice. supply the top brands, top, top brands. That's so, crazy. Nice. And, and we talk about minimum order quantities. I, I don't have to work with them. I tell them what I want to do. I tell them, I'm starting small. Can I have this quantity? Okay, you're Michael. You can have what you want. That's cool. <laughs> so that, that nice. makes it really, really simple for me to start off a, uh, a new watch brand because a lot of them, when you go into customization, you need a lot of prefabricated, prefabricated parts, and and that's how I got away with a, a low quantity to help to help me start. I mean, for the quantities that we deal with now, you know, I can practically work with every supply. But when we started, uh, we really need to keep by keep our uh, you know quantities low and have a good variety of parts. It makes sense. So that, that's that's how you know got us uh, started. I think that's a, actually quite a big barrier of entry uh, for a lot of um, our, our competitors. Yeah. Yeah. No, it makes sense. But I, I I love that you not only told us the story of how you started and what you did in the past to kind of get you to this to this goal of or not goal to this to this point of opening your company, but you also gave us a sneak peek into the Swiss watch industry that a lot of people I, I just think it's crazy that some of these watch companies are charging crazy amounts of money and people are gullible enough and they think that everything is made in switzerland when in reality a lot of stuff is made in asia and they just yeah. refuse to believe that they refuse to believe that because they're like no 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 no. i paid fifteen thousand, twenty thousand for this is everything was made in switzerland it's like no nah, i'm sorry buddy probably a little something was assembled in switzerland but exactly. that's about it <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, the Swiss watch, watch industry has been really proactive in promoting the Swiss-made brand. Right. And, and, and kind of, it's a brand. People believe in that. It, yeah. it doesn't mean much, uh, you know, in reality with the Swiss-made word. I mean, it has to have a Swiss-made movement, but it doesn't mean that it needs to have a Swiss-made case, a dial, or, or, or the brand. Or anything else. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. So, so for me, it's a superficial branding on, on the watch. So, okay. But, uh, you know, that's, that's where we step in. You know, we can show people that, you know, you can do quality stuff in, in a really reasonable price. And I think I'm done this set up uh, in this way. We never promote, oh, it's made in Hong Kong. It's made in China. Or it was Swiss made. Actually, we have material sometimes from Italy, from overseas. But we never really mention it too much, uh, except for the movement. You know, people want to know what the movement is. Right. And we're really upfront saying, oh, I'm, I'm not a movement manufacturer. You know, some companies actually buy standard stock uh, movements and change one or two parts and call it their own in-house movement. Right. I mean, that's, yeah, that's not really. That's pretty movement. shady. Uh, Panerite. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyway, um, so... 
I notice, and, and I love this, your company has been doing a ton of collaborations and I see Star Wars in the back and I know you've done things for, you know, Astro Boy coming up and you've done Snoopy. I mean, you've done a number of collaborations, Batman, and it's, uh, it's, it's crazy. So congratulations to you because partnering up with all these brands, I, I don't even know how you guys do it, but I do have a question out of all the collaborations you've done so far, which has been the most memorable, if you can tell us and why? Uh, I think Batman. I've always been a Batman fan. I've never imagined I will be making a Batman watch. You it's know? so cool. I yeah. mean, talking to a big company like Warner and DC Comics to get a license with them. You know, that's kind of yeah. like so out of reach uh, for us. Yeah. You know, it, it, this one, it really, we when I signed a deal with Warner to have a global license uh, on watches, uh, I mean, that was amazing. I mean, That's it awesome. took us some, some a while to convince them. You know, we didn't have to pay a lot because they really liked our business model, Got which it. was a good thing. You know, normally you will pay huge sums uh, to get a license like that. Okay. So, you know, I think it took a lot of convincing uh, from, from the, uh, the, the Warner office to show them, oh, we are actually trying to transform the watch industry. And I was showing them how we could actually use customization to offer a lot more than, than, than a normal collab launch. Yeah. You know, like when we did, let's say in our earlier collabs, we did one with Snoopy. Yeah. Uh, with Snoopy, you know, most people can only buy merch for Snoopy with stock and maybe Charlie Brown, but Snoopy has his whole family of friends. Right. But you will never see products out of them because usually people only make the things that sells well. So Snoopy right. and Woodstock naturally will be the, the ones they, that they make. But they will f forget about Linus, Peppermint, and everyone else because right. they don't sell. But with customization, because we actually print our dials in-house, we can actually print uh, based on demand basis. So we were offering the whole family of Snoopy yeah. uh, on our customizer. And this is the way that when we do um, collaborations, we add a lot of value to the brand because you're yeah. not just pick, picking the hero out of the, 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 the character. You can also print the villains. You can you know, print anyone in, 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 that, in that family. So this gives a very, very complete uh, picture of that brand. Let's say you have you have to do Pokemon. Who would offer? I um, how many monsters are there? Like hundred in, in Pokemon. Yeah. So oh. if we do, let's say Pokemon, we will be able to offer the fans all the choices. You don't That's have cool. to have like anyone. You can choose what we want. And I Very think cool. Undone is about choosing what you want. You know, Undone when we put our branding. We put it at where Swiss made this put. We put it at the very, very lowest point. Yep, uh, I below see the six of love. That's cool. We don't, and we don't force you to to like Andan's branding. We are not about a branding company. You know, we're so cool. You have to follow me. No, we are your supplier. We manufacture your watch. So we nice. naturally put Andan as where. It's made. It's made yeah. at undone. You know, your watch is made at undone. And that's our yeah. philosophy. So when people say, oh, branding wise, what do you do? Our branding, it's about you. Okay. So I, I always have this story. You know, I, I, I had one of my customers uh, tell me he, he is a pretty rich guy. He, he took his company uh, to the stock market. Oh, but okay. on a day when he actually had to hit the bell, he said, I took off my AP Chrono, which is like, I don't know, $30,000 watch. And I wore your undone watch. I said, why? Nice. Why do you wear a cheap watch? You know, I, I, I know my watch is not that expensive. Why wear a cheap watch? He said, it's not about undone. I wore your watch because I customized an undone watch. And I put a photo of my daughter on the awesome. back of the watch. And I want to take her when I list my company. That's awesome. And that's the story. So 
it doesn't matter so much what Marsha was. It was about her daughter, his, his daughter. That's awesome. So I think we are onto a different level of selling uh, of watches. Mm-hmm. We're not selling how good, it's how personal, how, how much it means to you. So on customized watches, it, it's how much you, it means whatever you put on it, but also on collaboration. It's all these collaboration figures, what it means to you, your, your toyhood story, your, your, toy, toy, uh, your, 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 your superheroes uh, in your childhood. You know, Batman was one of them. You know, uh, Superman was my second one. You know, I, I always thought if I put on a cape, I could fly. Yeah. I really, I really believe in that. So yeah. having that on the watch as well would make me, you know, feel very complete. Yeah, I would say. that is very cool. Well, I well, do have. To, of, well, sorry, let me ask him. Let me ask him something, Pete, because I've been dying to know this. So, I'm a huge fan of my my wife is a huge fan of the Omega Snoopy watch, right? But we we couldn't get it, and it's a little expensive, a lot expensive. And I know that you guys done the Snoopy watch in, in the past and I missed out on that. And I, I've been hoping that you guys release another Snoopy watch. Is that in the works at all? Or are you guys going to do it again? Or that was a one-time deal in the past or I'm just curious. Right. Snoopy was, uh, was a sellout. We, we literally sold out in an hour. Uh, yeah. The yeah. Lab. But my thing it's about collabs is you, you really have to make it collectible, you know, to Got have it. to to re-release something that was successful is never really in, in my business plan. I mean, if you want to really it. build a brand, you you need to build a loyalty. I mean, uh, we still have people asking whether you will remake that, that Snoopy moon landing watch, but I made it because of the Apollo landing, Got and it. that was it. You know, unless there's another Apollo coming out, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna <laughs> Got make it. another Apollo landing watch. Moon landing watch. So it's about events. Uh, it's about really having something really unique. Although it's not an expensive piece, but as you mentioned, right. you really want a, a piece. Yeah, you know, it's, it's it's just a cool watch. I mean, it's yeah. very nice. You know, it, it looks like any other you know Swiss. Yeah. Watch, no, know, for sure. Of that era. So I I've been showing good value now. That watch is appreciating. Uh, people have been uh, exchanging, I think, on eBay and stuff, you know, for multiple times of the original price. I, right. I mean, that, that really makes me happy. You know, like people really now like to collect other watches. Right. And I like to build a brand that people, you know, wants to collect. I mean, it makes it really affordable to collect anyway. So you can have multiple and watches, you know. I think right. our top buyer, uh, our top customer bought actually so far up to 25 undone watches wow mm. yeah and okay. the second one bought 23 pieces wow. so there are a lot of people that buy multiple undone watches whereas in different brands usually you will only oh, try one of a brand and then move on to the next right yeah but undone makes you come back for more because of these collaborations there must be one character that you like it child yeah right 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 <laughs> well, well that of that avenue <laughs> awesome Let, i have another question before p ross moves on to the other question so i was when i was customizing this watch i was going through all your watches and i love the chronographs right that you offer because they're very patek like and and just like they give you that feel without being an homage it's more well it's an homage but not a one-to-one replica or if you will or a carbon copy it's it's more it's, it's just paying homage too but one of the things that I noticed, I was like, I see the chronographs are mecha quartz. Nothing wrong with that. It's cool. But I was like, I wonder if Undone will ever offer uh, manual wine movement, kind of like the ST19 movement that we see from like Seagull. So I'm just curious, is that in the works at all to add a mechanical chronograph? Right. So basically for mechanical chronographs, you only have two choices. One is Swiss movements, most likely uh, about you, 7750. Right. Very expensive. Chinese made movements. So right. although I'm Chinese, uh, based in Hong Kong, but their movements have not reached the reliability, uh, the seagull movement uh, okay. that I really wanted uh, uh, to put into my own brand of watch. But the other choice will be the, the Swiss made one. That will be a pricing issue. You know, I would okay. literally have to add a thousand dollar on retail uh, to make it the same watch. Mm. 
Got so it. that's kind of like beyond my uh, my brand positioning. You know, I, I don't want all my watches starting from $1,500 instead of $300. So I, I want to make cool watches uh, to be really affordable. So, you know, you can buy multiple watches a month. Hmm. So okay. it's, it's not about, oh, why don't you, you know, I, I get, you know, asked for uh, the question, why don't you put the seagull movement into it? Yes, I could literally put a seagull movement. But if uh, you have to service or fix the watch after like 12 or 24 months, and it will cost you another three four $400 to do a servicing, it, it really doesn't make real sense to me. You know, I, I want things uh, that can be used over a long time. Okay. And, and okay. I want it to be reliable. And, and, and it really has to make sense. You know, mechanical movements, if it is not very reliable, then, then why, why use it? You know, then we chose the second best, which is the Mecca uh, quartz, which okay. actually okay. half of them, half of the movement is mechanical. So when you right. reset right. the hand, it actually just performs like a mechanical watch. It's just, right. you know, springs back to zero instead of going slowly like a, a quartz movement. So that is our next best. That's why we, we use that movement on the chronograph movements. Okay. But on, you know, on, on three hand watches, we do use uh, mechanical three hand watches, right. Um, right. Japanese uh, three hand watches. So, so those you, you can get a mechanical watch because we can get them at, at good reasonable prices. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So Very cool. Like, well, yeah. Thanks for answering my question. <laughs> now, my question was going back more to the collaborations. Now, I'm right. a big Star Wars fan. Okay? Ah. Huge. <laughs> huge. Huge. What was getting that collaboration like? Yeah, I have three watches in my pocket. <laughs> okay. I, have, I, have a, I already have a, a Star Wars license uh, and, and I have a Darth Vader. I have the Mandalorian. I have the Baby Yoda. Uh, so it will yeah. be coming out soon. Ooh. Okay, cool. P. Ross, you better sign up. Oh, yeah, <laughs> better definitely. Sign up. For sure. I tell you, they are pretty, pretty cool. For sure. That's yeah. crazy. That's awesome. Yeah. Looking forward to that. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So will you ever move up market and offer a watch in a precious metal? Like a limited edition or something. I know you say you don't want to have all of them in, in, in your yeah, collection because right. you don't want to be in that market. But I guess what P. Ross is referring to is maybe just like a limited uh, edition. Or something. I, I yeah. wouldn't say no, but I, I don't find a, a reason to use it right now. I mean, it has to be that special, special time, you know. Got it. You know, to have a gold watch, you know, probably do 10 or something, just, you know, for fun yeah. to, 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 to celebrate a moment. But I haven't found that moment yet. So okay. I'll save, save it, save it there. If I was a big Star Wars fan, I probably would do a, a gold <laughs> art, a, a CP3 old watch. Yeah. Right? Oh. Go on, go. yeah, that'd be hot. <laughs> that would be so be awesome. Hot. With the Salida <laughs> movement in it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that'd be cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, that was my next question, actually. So I, I know NH is huge in your catalog, right? So Seiko mm -hmm. NH, NH movement, which is great movement, obviously. I, I love them. And I think a lot of micro, brand, uh, mm -hmm. micro brands out there love them because of their reliability and affordability. And the thing with Swiss uh, movements, and maybe a lot of our listeners and, and viewers don't know, is that uh, I've been told that the Swiss industry or the Swiss movements is almost like the stock market. They go up and down in value so much. They fluctuate as opposed to maybe the Japanese movements don't fluctuate in price as much. That's what I've been told. So with that okay. said, my question is, uh, have you ever thought about maybe perhaps making a badge or again, a limited edition with Swiss movements, whether it be, well, Eda is kind of out of the question because it's kind of hard to get, but uh, Salida, maybe Salida movements is that, yeah, uh, actually, I, I, I've, I've done it before, but it's on a, a special commission project. Okay. So it, it's yeah, making it is, is actually not difficult at all. You know, right. as long as, you know, pricing allows, you know, uh, the movement itself will add a, a few hundred dollars uh, to, right. to the yeah. watch. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I'm not against it. Uh, we're, we're working on it. We used to have one model uh, using the value 7750. But that mm -hmm. was also for another mm -hmm. collab project. And that was selling for like uh, 1300 US. Okay. So once we get up to that kind of price, a $1,300 watch, we, we don't get 
that much of a competitive edge Makes anymore. Sense. Okay. Yeah. So if people like it, if there's a brand that specifies I need to use a Swiss movement, we'll do it. Not a problem. So I guess my next question is kind of a mute point now because based on everything you're telling me about what your brand represents and where you want to position yourself in the market, my question was going to be about in-house movements. But by the mm-hmm. sounds of it, I don't think yeah. that's probably a route that you that you want to explore. But I don't know. Is that even – have you considered yeah, an in-house you know, movement? People- you know, I, I know a lot of friends in, in, in uh, Switzerland, also in the in the movement making industry. Okay. Is that even when you're talking about, you know, the Swiss eater movement, uh, when they do a change, even one part change on their standard 2824 movement, it will make so many adjustments that is needed to, to, to make that change. They even had to call in an old watchmaker, which made the eater for 30 years to, to get his uh, understanding on, on, on the changes and stuff. Wow. So making a movement, uh, you can't easily make a movement in two, three years time. You right. can actually design it. I mean, on paper, it will be accurate, but how it runs over time, you really need the time to find Correct. out. So you see a lot of the new uh, Swiss brands that makes their own in-house complications as a you know watch service company we see a lot of them being brought in with issues you know right. they're stopping for no reasons it's because a lot of issues haven't been ironed out over time because you're talking about super precision over every single part in the movement so you don't know where problems are uh, you know, just a very, very minute uh, manufacturing defect will, will make the movement stop. Yep. So if someone tells you they can make a movement in three years' time, yes, they can produce it, but doesn't mean it will be reliable. We're, where we're talking in the Swiss industries, we're talking about famous movements like 28 to 24. It's been made forever. You know, Rolex calibers has been improved over time. It's not developed brand new in no time. So even a big super company like Rolex, they won't come up with new movements every year. You know, it yeah. will take them like 20 years before they will offer the next caliber. But even the new caliber is just a small improvement over the old one. Correct. Yeah. So so that's where I see it. You know, I you know a lot of people may not be so much into the inner workings of the watch movement. They may not appreciate these, you know, these minute uh, improvements. You know, even this, even even in in, in Asia, they they do improvements uh, uh, over time on the same same movements. You know, like Rolex, they've been uh, changing their hairsprings and stuff. Some very very minute things, but that makes a ton of difference in the movement. So yeah. rather than you know reinventing the wheel, you know. Let, let's, you know, use something that, you know, the most important thing of a watch movement is being accurate and finding a reliable and accurate movement is, I think, the, the, the important thing. Instead of claiming uh, your a watch movement maker means actually nothing if it's not accurate, if it's not reliable. So that's a different route that some people kind of like. But, you know, in reality, they've been buying those watches. And, and even, you know, when these new companies coming out with new calibers and sometimes they kind of like bankrupt after some years, we cannot fix them because we don't have parts and we won't be able to manu- manufacture parts for it. Right. But mm. if you use a very kind of standard movement, even if we go out of business like a Seiko movement, you will never, never have any problems finding parts for it. Right. Serviceability right. is also a very important thing when you make, especially an investment in an expensive watch. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So as a collector, that's where I see it, you know, because I, I, I wear my Rolexes, which is 60 years old. It needs servicing. It will have broken parts, but I will be able to find them not so difficult. Got it. So that's, that's very important when you collect watches. Yeah, no, I I completely agree. Now I've heard also uh, Mark from Long Island Watch. He told us that he uh, he prefers 
the Miyota 9000 series yep. over, I think, uh, the Salida. He's just like, man, it's, it's proven. I've spoken to different watchmakers and the Salida. I mean, mm-hmm. the, the Miyota 9000 series is just a powerful, powerful movement. It, it gives the Swiss yeah. a run for their money. So do you yeah. agree? Is there any, have you looked into that movement? I'm just, I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah of course I, I looked into Miyota, but I, I choose to stay with the, the Seiko because I, I know them well. I yeah. can get my supply regularly. Uh, I could not get them directly from the manufacturer. You always have to go through dealers. Got so it. I didn't like it with, uh, with the Seiko movement. Uh, I, I trade with them directly. So That's I cool. would have good predictability on, on the supply and stuff. And they even send engineers out to us if we have an issue. Oh, and wow. I, I prefer that kind of uh, direct support. Yeah. So Miyota, I, I, I heard it's not a bad movement at all. Uh, you know, some people prefer Miyota. Uh, I would say it's, it's good. Uh, Seiko is not bad. I think Miyota so that 9,000 movement is it's good it's a little bit more expensive but yeah. I think on the Seiko if we do some tuning on it which we do internally it will get pretty good results also oh. so uh, Salita wise uh, they, they've actually been uh, ramping up their production and I've used it used the movement in, in one batch of our watches it's not bad either you know they, they've also based their design on the proven design so okay. uh, yeah, they they both are really good movements. Okay, cool, yeah. cool. Okay, so what's next for Undone Watches, and where do you see yourself in five years? So uh, I think we will mainly still be a watch brand, but I will be uh, looking on you know how we can apply this customization process into other different products as well. You know, okay. Let's say, can we explore, let's say, another goods and other stuff. You know, I, I want this to be a more like a, a brand for consumers. Uh, what other things we can customize? You know, let's say for wallets or leather goods, can we do that? Can we do it for, for anything? I would say uh, we'll make products that is very personalized that you would actually wear on yourself, you know. Things like jewelry, okay. uh, other goods. But I think in specific is we want to embrace more new technologies, whether it is in the manufacturing or whether it is in the business model. So we're you know lately looking at like the NFT in the in, in blockchain, okay. how we can apply NFT uh, into watches, not so much as to make it a uh, you know. Uh, something that appreciates in value, but how do you apply NFT to make it like a unique proof uh, of identity? That so this sense. is where we, we are looking into it. You know, now when we, when you claim you have a one-on-one, what really means that, you know, would the manufacturer be making like a hundred of these one-on-ones or is it a real one-on-one? So NFT will allow us uh, to really tell this unique story. We can right. even put uh, a special message into that NFT token. Yeah, so, makes sense. Mm. Yeah, so this is something that we will continue to look into, uh, the NFT, but in five years, but we will just keep up uh, with the technologies, I guess. So you're cool. speaking NFTs. Uh, is it fair to say that you are also looking into perhaps taking crypto payment as a form of currency to purchase your watches? Well, crypto payment, it's not that difficult. I mean, we can look into it, but I think, you know, companies like PayPal said they will accept crypto, but I think they haven't offered this as yet. Okay. But I, I think if, if the payment, payment platform allows it, we, we won't be against it at all. Okay. You won't be against it, except don't give me Dogecoin. I don't accept Dogecoin. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, so we all know Rolex is extremely difficult to obtain, right? And and the secondary market is just nuts, right? It's just stupid, stupid prices and whatever. There's just so much talk on podcasts and YouTube and just everywhere. So a lot of people, including P. Ross and I, 
we recently picked up Tudor, right? So we picked up a Tudor watch and we're blown away by Tudor, right? And our friends yeah. picked up Tudor and all of a sudden everybody's pick, picking up Tudor. So you've been in the game longer than we have. You just spoke about your history with vintage Rolexes and whatnot. So obviously you're aware of Tudor and you've been aware of Tudor. Yeah. So I want to get your perspective. Is Tudor a good alternative to Rolex? And do you think Tudor will ever be looked at as Rolex because clearly Rolex is trying to move up market. And I believe Tudor is probably trying to do the same. So mm -hmm. I guess that's my question to you. Uh, I'm, we're, we're curious. <laughs> okay. For me, Tudor is a nice brand. It's a nice watch, but it's not a Rolex. Right. Rolex is a Rolex. I mean, right. <laughs> Rolex has all the heritage. Uh, it's one of the, the first companies that really knows how to market a watch. You yeah, know? It yeah. has the, first watch on Mount Everest. It has the deepest uh, diving watch. Uh, these had been a team. Uh, you could never change the history. You would never right. say Tudor was won on the first one won on Mount Everest. It will never be the first watch won on the British channel, cross channel. Uh, it will be, it won't be that. So you can't rewrite history. So I right. think Tudor will never, never attain what Rolex has done. But Tudor could explore. I mean, Tudor could, oh, it's not a new brand, but it's it's actually moving uh, in new directions lately. Right, I think right. it can compete well with all the different new brands. And I think it has the potential to do it if they do their marketing correct. But I would never say Rolex, I mean, Tudor can replace Rolex. I, I doubt it. Rolex is kind of like very, very unique, uh, like Patek Philippe at, as well. Uh, right. Those two, you can really never, never uh, kind of uh, uh, replace, I would say. But you can make it in, into a nicer brand. I think Tudor is always a very, very, very nice watch for that price. You know, you kind of get a Rolex quality at a Tudor price. You know, if you have to go and buy a chronograph with a Valjoux 7750, I think they're very, very well priced. I think I wish they could use more on their heritage, like the Tudor Snowflakes. Uh, I think they've been doing it almost right, I would say almost, because as a vintage collector, I see some details are not done correctly, I would say. But, you know, you know, maybe I'm used to looking at the, the vintage looking Tudors. But if you want to do a heritage uh, piece, you can get them a little bit more accurate. I think they yeah. haven't been on the collector side. If they, they would have followed it more correctly, I would have bought more Tudors. But Got I think it. when they explore new, new techniques, you know, they have their ceramics, they have their PVDs. I think it's, it's good because this is where Rolex hasn't taken those uh, moves and Tudor is moving in that direction. Right, and I think, right, right. Mm -hmm. But with the backup of the whole Rolex group, they can definitely uh, be one of really the dark horses uh, in, 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 in brands other than Rolex. <laughs> Yeah, no, for sure. And I, and I guess my 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 main question, and I guess I didn't ask it correctly, is mm -hmm. a lot of people saw Tudor for the longest time as kind of like the little sister, the little brother of Rolex. But it really seems like as of lately, Tudor's coming, coming out of the shadows yeah. and really coming into its own where people do recognize where it came from, obviously, because you can't rewrite yeah. history. But now mm -hmm. they don't see it. A lot of people don't see it as in inferior than than Rolex because they look at other brands and they don't they don't correlate that right they look at another brand as a standalone brand and just say that Oris is Oris is it better than Rolex no but it's Oris whatever it has its own accolades and and its own value right own value proposition or whatever but same thing for for Tudor at least in my opinion that's the way that I see it is it better than Rolex no is it ever going to be better than a Rolex obviously not but would it ever take its place, meaning that all the new Rolexes are so crazy unattainable that normal collectors with normal pockets go, you know what? I have this much money to spend. What do I spend it on? Well, 
like you said, I'll spend it on something that has Rolex quality, but it's a lot more affordable. And in reality, it was, it is a Rolex, you know, if you, if you look at I the DNA, the problem, it is. Yeah. The problem with Tudor before was that it didn't have its own identity. Correct. It was, it was its knockoff Rolex because it did share the same watch case. It's kind of almost like interchangeable, a lot of parts. Yeah. The Mercedes so, hand. I mean, there were so many yeah. things that you're like, yeah. You never actually had any real identity of Tudor. You know, what's a Tudor watch? Oh, it's a Rolex cased, rebranded Rolex case. Got it. And I yeah. think what the change lately at Tudor is they are moving away from that status. They are designing yeah. their own watch cases. And I think now it's a real start for Tudor to be a separate individual brand. Is I would say it will depend how they lead the company. If they continue to innovate in that direction, I think it will be a very strong ind independent brand afterwards. Okay. If they go backwards and remake Rolex cases and stuff, I doubt they will ever be independent. Yeah, I, I, I seriously doubt it. And that's why a lot of uh, people have asked the question uh, myself and I've heard other collectors ask the question, will they ever release another Submariner? The answer is no, because like you said, they don't want to move backwards. They want to move forward. And the Black Bay right. line has been, has been massive for them and, and look at exactly. everything they're doing. So why would yeah. they? Uh, yeah. And, you know, and, and I'm also really happy with uh, Omega, what they're doing, right? I mean, I, I know a lot of people are, tired of their limited releases and, and this and yeah. that or whatever but i mean it's always on one case on one design <laughs> <laughs> on one speed mask it was like 500 six speed mask yeah you're like which one do i have uh, yeah you have, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Many, you have but, the uh, same version you had <laughs> you know yeah no for sure for sure well let me get your take on the patek philippe right because I, mm -hmm. I i know you're a collector diverse collector what's your opinion on what happened right with the green dial selling for crazy amounts of money yeah. oh wow I, i'm sorry to say that but i'm i never was a a fan of the knots list i'm me I'm neither on the, me neither I, i'm on the traditional side i had a yeah. platinum uh uh annual calendar you know i oh. had a choice for the same price uh for a annual calendar and a knots list when i purchased a few years back okay and i purchased an annual calendar beautiful it, it's a complication nicer watch better material Nautilus was just an entry level watch for the tech. Yeah. It's so simple and yet it's so pricey now. I mean, it's, it's, this is something that has been actually, it's, it's the, it's the collectors who decided that Nautilus right. is the one to, to make it happen, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the tech, the tech was not known for the, Nautilus at all before then. Uh, it was known for its complications, for watchmaking, for its precious metal, but yet the Nautilus breaks all the rules. It was the stainless steel case that's collectible and then funky colors. Now the green color is popular. <laughs> right. I, can't, I really can't explain it. It's just like you're taking a Honda Civic and, and price it like a Honda NSX. Wow. Mm. Great analogy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Wow. How can I explain it? I mean, if you want to, if you want to hunt a survey and price it that way, so be it. You know, I'll, I'll rather drive a Honda NX6. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if they like it, okay. But I, I don't know. Would that last? I, I'm not so sure. I mean, you, you've seen other brands like Panerize, you know, in previous days. You know, they were so collectible, yet, you know, after these years, are, are they sustainable? Nope. Yeah, and it's crazy to see the downfall of uh, Panerai. I think they're cool watches, but yeah, yeah. man, they're, they're hurting. They're definitely hurting. And and also, the replica market is just insane. It's so scary, like, buying yeah. a pre own Panerai, because even the i've heard so many horror stories that panerai themselves couldn't even tell it was a fake even with the, with the case back open just because it's so yeah. hard you know yeah. uh, I mean, once you use a generic movement then you know that's why they made their own hand cast i mean they were using the early 1750 modifying it right but if you use those movements well everyone can get one yep you know? 
And, no, and the sure. case is not so difficult to manufacture it as well. Yeah, wow. no, that's true. That's yeah, crazy. I, I won't be bothered about, you know, fake watches as a brand. I mean, I mean, they will sell, but these people who buy fake watches never will buy a real watch anyway. So it's, it's not your market. So I, I never really bother about, about fake watches. I mean, okay. they will eventually get rid of their fake watch. If they can afford it, they will buy an original. In some if time. they want to. Right. Yeah. 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 If they continue to buy fake, then they, they're not your customers either way. So, right. I mean, it's just like people buying fake uh, handbags. You know, they, they aren't your, they aren't your customers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I do have one last question for you that just occurred to me. So, I mean, you're, you're, you obviously have a Patek Philippe in your collection of vintage Rolexes and a lot of things that a lot of us collectors would obviously love to own. <laughs> but my question to you, I guess, is do you have a grail uh, piece that you, that you want to get? And, and if you get it, you're like, ah, oh, I'll be so happy with that. Mm. I think honestly, my I, I already have it, which, oh. which was my first, which was my first Rolex, the the okay. first Submariner. I think it's not about the value; it's about finding, uh, you know, a, a gem in, uh, for 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 very very cheap price. You know, it's, it's not buying the most expensive watch. It's about it's about the experience. Uh, you know, once you. Uh, uh, once you have a little bit more money, you can get buy more expensive watches. But it's it's about finding something so unique, and I think that's why uh, in in collecting, I don't collect so much the modern watches. I collect more the vintage watches because right. even if you can get a model of a watch, you, you then talk about the dial condition, the case condition, and so forth. So every piece is unique. So I think I I have that one already. Uh, which is the 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 Submariner, the special edition Submariner, and uh, I think for me now the challenge is to to always uh, design a new watch. I think I have more interest in designing uh, watches than buying other people's uh, than acquiring other people's. <laughs> Got I it. think all my excitement, like today, I'm wearing there my offering. Uh, that is always my favorite watch. My favorite watch is always the one that I'm designing. <laughs> now, let me ask you something about bronze, because I know that bronze has been a little controversial, right? Some people love it. Yeah. Some people not so much, right? And yeah. I know that that uh, obviously Tudor, speaking of Tudor, just came out with the yeah. Black Bay 58 bronze, but they claim yes. that they put some kind of uh, thing in the material so it doesn't patina as quick. Yeah. Uh, do you believe, are you doing the same thing or are you just not touching it? So it could patina quicker or what, what is it? That Actually, you guys I, I think for, for our customers, they want to see the patina faster. Okay. They even dip it in salt water, lemon juice, whatever. <laughs> they have all their Get green. <laughs> Hurry up. Snake, snake oil. <laughs> so <laughs> I think for our customers, they prefer it to patina like in no time. Okay. Now, I've been wearing this watch for like, uh, a week it's already i could see it like, i yeah. could see it is that so, available yet or not yet or no no no, no. oh uh, oh yeah. hide it hide it <laughs> i have to hide it <laughs> yeah well, well but, just know y'all saw it here first so can i watch the <laughs> podcast when what okay when is it when is that watch coming out a few months uh, few we don't have a schedule i think early next year because oh. it's going to be a deep diver bronze watch and then i i could tell that thing is 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 yeah. thick right 15 millimeters well what are we talking yeah it's thick i haven't measured it <laughs> but it looks, this will it have a this is also a collab uh edition it will be one of the superheroes as well that Ooh. resides in the ocean oh we'll leave it at that oh, okay. Okay. i think we know i think we know <laughs> okay. what we're talking about we'll leave it at that yeah <laughs> well yeah. we're in the awesome. we're in the part of the show michael where we talk other things, whatever you want, food or, or watches, non watches, movies, whatever you want, just so people get to know yeah. you a little bit more. Obviously, we've just been talking about watches. So, yeah, if you got anything to, you know, I'm, I'm basically a collector of everything. You know, I have oh. a whole warehouse full of old telephones, uh, old hi fi. I, I like vintage cars. You know, I'm a vintage person. I collect cool. basically everything. You know, all my childhood life was, uh, you know, going through flea markets. Even when I was traveling in Europe, I go to France, Paris, mm -hmm. I go to the biggest 
flea market to sort through everything. Wow! So I think that gives me a, a very good, um, it's a very good eye opener. Where you know, like in the sixties, seventies, when things are made really, really nicely, I think people don't kind of appreciate、uh, quality enough nowadays. They're mass produced. You know,、right. a lot of production have shifted to China. Not to say they don't have good quality, but you know, now that products are made, I would say cheaply, it will never be made with the same quality that it used to have. I'm、right. sure the Chinese manufacturers can manufacture the same quality standards, but you will never, never pay that much money for the same piece of item. And I think where, that's where、right. the problem now is. You know, you will never pay so much. I, I think for 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 anything. So we are not getting the same quality as we were using the stuff in childhood times.、Right. You know, even cars、mm-hmm. were made nicer. You know, the cars now are so plasticky. You know, look、right. at the dashboards; it's all clipped on. You know,、right. you. You pull it open. Oh shit! It's just made of you know paper. You What know, is this? Like fiber. Yeah.、Mm-hmm. Now I agree with you. I, I I've heard was it a podcast? I forgot where I or Netflix show something that it is true that manufacturing ha- has gone down not just because of of mass production but also they do it on purpose. So you keep buying more product. I think they were studying high end brands like、uh, denim and some other clothing items. Where back in the day it used to last a lot longer, but now they purposely do it so it disintegrates quicker. So you buy more because if they don't have you buying more, then you, they lose you as a customer. So it's it's a hundred percent true what what you're what you're saying. How long saying. would you wear a t shirt for? Like three months, you know. That's probably max you wear out of the T-shirt. Yeah, you wash it a few times, and you're like, oh, okay, it's all faded. I need a new one. Yeah,、mm, yeah. yeah. You go to Gap, it's like five ninety nine. You get another T-shirt. You know. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah man. I, I think people don't treasure products anymore. I agree. Except, you know, watches they treasure it, but mostly on consumer products, they don't treasure it. Yeah. I I mean, we're we're just buying too much. I mean, we're buying society. You know, we just get our 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 highs out of buying instead of actually getting something nice and use it over time. Yeah. You know, I I still keep a Montblanc which I bought for myself. You know, after the the first paycheck, and I think that's a good thing. You know, you can have a nice quality pen that you can use over, you know, like fifty years. Yeah. Instead、What? of. That you go through every week. <laughs> yeah, well, I, th- I think you also hit a a good point, and we've talked about that in the podcast before. And is、uh, it almost goes into addiction? And I hate to say that, but it's、yeah. true. We we chase the high, and、yeah. it's like, aren't you content with thirty, forty, fifty, hundred watches in your collection? They're all different,、mm-hmm. and they all do the same thing. It's、yeah. like I don't think it's it's the 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 owning part of. The the journey. I think it's the chase part of the journey, and that adrenaline that you get when you buy something new, and、yeah. it, it could become come definitely a problem. And 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 you know we we really analyze things in the podcast, like P Ross, and we brought some other people,、mm-hmm. and like really said, wouldn't it be better to have a smaller collection with just nicer watches as opposed to have a bigger collection with mediocre watches, entry level watches. At the end of the day, you're gonna buy what makes you happy, right? So if that's a ten dollar Casio, so be it, or that's a hundred thousand dollar Patek, and if you can afford it. But there is some truth to maybe less is more. So, but that's just for each one of our viewers and listeners to decide. So, <laughs> quality yeah, over quantity. Yeah, I mean,、quantity. some people、uh, would just want to own a lot of stuff. You know, the the, the sense of ownership makes them feel good. Yeah, but、um, you know, for me, as I said,、uh, as you said, as I, I'm actually.、Uh, Getting rid of the the some of the the watches that I never wear,、yeah. regardless of price.、Okay. I think it, it's having you know nice pieces that you really want to wear. You know, as a collector, honestly, you only have a few watches that you will really wear. Most of them just goes into the safe, it just goes into the drawer. You you don't really wear it. Just like clothes, there are yeah, always yeah. few pieces that you wear. So、I、why、agree. bother owning the other pieces? Well, let let other people have the have the chance of owning it. You know. Yeah, for sure. 
for sure yeah. and get that money back and either put it into another piece or yeah. use it for your family on a vacation yeah. or your college fund for your kid or whatever so yeah 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 i i think i you know for me now it's uh buying less but buying better quality that's that's it and, and then that's that's my philosophy now you know enjoy life you know put more time with your family kids and you know instead of keep buying stuff. <laughs> quality over quantity I appreciate that. Well, yeah. we've we've reached the hour mark. So thank you so much for coming on the show and taking the time and awesome watches. I I, I encourage anyone listening and watching, go check out their watches. Go to Undone to the Undone website. I guarantee you have a lot of fun. You could upload things and change things and you feel like a watch designer, which is super cool. Uh, and if you do end up purchasing a piece, I recommend it. Obviously, they're great watches. But uh, Michael, where can people find you or find the company or what, what, where can they go? Oh, we're just on the internet, undone.com, U-N-D-O-N-E.com. Perfect, perfect. P. Ross, cool. where can people find you? Ross Wristwatch Love everywhere, YouTube, Facebook, okay. Instagram. Sounds good. And, 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 and uh, check us out, uh, Tudor Bros 2021. On Instagram, we just started a new account, Michael. We just got our tutor, so we're excited, right? We started a, a an Instagram account for our tutor bros because our friends Omar and Dave they kept saying tutor bros. They came up with that hashtag, and yeah. then people started using tutor bros, and people started buying tutors. And now we we are on Instagram under tutor bros twenty twenty one. You and... should check out our Popeye watch. Which oh, is I I, I, I saw it. So yeah. cool. So cool. Yeah, P-Ross, yeah, did you see their Popeye watch? <laughs> you got to go to their website, man. Check it out. Check it out. Check but anyways, it out. SoCal watch reviews for me everywhere, you know, YouTube, Instagram, Relojando is my Spanish uh, YouTube channel. If you speak Spanish or have anybody to speak Spanish. But anyway, we had a lot of fun. Michael, thank you so much again for coming on. I look forward to talking to you again because, I mean, you have all these cool collaborations. We will love to, you know, showcase them and talk to you again. You're full of knowledge and we love talking to you <laughs> especially the star wars collab hey uh, yeah when oh, that man. drops Jeez, come yeah. back <laughs> yeah. thank you so much miguel all right yeah. guys well thank you so much and stay humble